Today, today we're making pumpkin spice lattes for two reasons. One, lots of fall recipes call for canned pumpkin. You can be extra and you can make your own. Can you tell Shava doesn't like pumpkin? Roasted pumpkin if you want. Otherwise you can buy a can of pumpkin. The problem is that almost all of these baked goods don't call for the whole can of pumpkin. So you often have like a fourth of a cup or a half of a cup left over. So we have some ideas for you on how to use the rest. And the second reason we're making pumpkin spice lattes instead of a pumpkin vinaigrette or a pumpkin pie smoothie is because that's what you wanted. We put a poll up on our YouTube community and you that's what you voted for. And if you're not familiar with how to get to polls like that, you just open up the YouTube app and thumb through, scroll through a little bit and you'll see our posts and videos and polls. You have to be subscribed. And if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, I so here's what you do. Healthy-ish pumpkin spice lattes in the Vitamix. Here we go. We'll take the top off. Any Vitamix will do, any container will do, full size. Baby. One and a half cups of any nut milk of your choice. Third of a cup of espresso if you've got it. Otherwise, just really strong coffee. Pumpkin puree. One-handed. It ended up being exactly one-third of a cup of pumpkin puree, which is precisely what our recipe calls for. But, but don't sweat it if you have a little less. By the way, stick around and we'll show you how we made these pumpkin cookies that we made before we were left with one-third of a cup of pumpkin puree. Yeah. You can make it as sweet or as not sweet as you want. This is two tablespoons of maple, one teaspoon of vanilla. Last thing, two teaspoons of pumpkin spice. You don't have pumpkin spice seasoning. You can always use like cinnamon and clove, allspice, nutmeg. That's basically what this is. And now, blend on high for five minutes and put it on the soup setting. Ready? <laughs> Go do a five minute workout and come back up for the big reveal. Remember, there's no heating mechanism inside of the Vitamix container. It just uses friction. So the blade's spinning at 2400 RPM. It's just like when you rub your hands together like this, you feel the heat. That's what's gonna get us that hot, steamy pumpkin spice latte or whatever hot drink or hot soup you wanna make or our queso. and enjoy with those cookies we made or that cake you made or that pie you made before. For a pumpkin spice latte, it's really good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Where are those cookies we made right yesterday? There. Can we show you how we made those cookies? Making pumpkin cookies from Nora Cooks. She never steers us wrong. Okay. We're going to a holiday, a Jewish holiday called Sukkot party, and we're bringing fall treats. It's like a fall harvest holiday, so we're making pumpkin cookies because what else says fall but pumpkins? <laughs> now, now, can you tell that pumpkin's not her favorite? And we're using the hand mixer. Why? I guess I could put it in blender, but. We shouldn't have. This took forever. It would have got the same consistency and would have taken like 15 seconds instead of like seven minutes, just throwing it in the blender and mixing it all around. But this was half a cup of butter. We're using Miyoko's. Tons of sugar, three quarters cup sugar, three quarters cup brown sugar. Then once that's all mixed up, add one and a fourth cups of canned pumpkin. And I love this note from Nora and what was the inspiration behind this video, you won't use quite the whole can. I was told that recently Chrissy Teigen made a, a pumpkin recipe and she said, you guys always get so mad when I leave you with a little bit of the pumpkin puree can. So yay for this video. One teaspoon of vanilla and combine it all together until smooth. Then add two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You could probably substitute if you want to do gluten-free flour. One teaspoon of baking soda. Oh, we get to use fresh baking soda? <laughs> We're not using dirty fridge baking soda? <laughs> <laughs> it's true, the last thing we baked, I was like, these taste kind of weird. Did you, are these have baking soda? Did you use the gross fridge baking soda? And Shaw was like, mm -hmm. 
Oi. Uh, life. Okay. One teaspoon of baking powder, one tablespoon of cinnamon, two teaspoons of ground ginger, and one half teaspoon of salt. This you definitely want to use like a wood spoon. Stir until just combined. Nora says the dough is going to be wetter than most cookies, but that's normal. That's correct. And then put heaping tablespoons, so like one and a half to two tablespoons, on that parchment paper covered cookie sheet and flatten them out a little bit. You're going to want to get your hand a little wet, not soaking wet, but just enough wet so your hand doesn't stick to the cookie dough. And then bake at 350 Fahrenheit for 11 to 14 minutes until the tops are no longer shiny. Let them sit on a cookie sheet for five minutes and do this. Round. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Round. Take them out, and now let's make the frosting. I wonder if this would have been easier in the blender too. So beat half a cup of that softened butter for two minutes, then add three cups of powdered sugar, one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, half a teaspoon of vanilla, and mix it around till it's perfectly smooth. We're using a hand mixer. You can add a tablespoon of your milk of choice to kind of make it smoother, more of a frosting consistency. If it gets too wet, you just have to add more powdered sugar. And this is supposed to be like cream cheese frosting, so it's gonna have a little bit of a bite. That's what the apple cider vinegar does. Good. It's somewhere in between buttercream and cream cheese. And then you frost the heck out of them. Grocery store pumpkin butter cookies. So it's a win. Yeah. You like pumpkin. My buddy at the party said they were the best cookies he's ever had. I thought they were really good too. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.